Okay, let's talk about alignment. The isolation routing of PCBs typically consists of multiple operations. The sequence usually proceeds something like this. The traces on the bottom are milled, the board is flipped over, and the top copper is milled. The bit is changed, and the board outline is cut out. The bit is changed again, and the holes are drilled. Of course, some of these steps can be skipped, and the order can be adjusted as required. The point is that each one of these operations consists of running a G-code file on your CNC mill. Each G-code file is derived from a Gerber file output by your EDS software. LineGrinder, of course, does the Gerber to G-code conversion for you. Fundamentally, issues arise because LineGrinder processes each Gerber file separately. Decisions made about the alignment in one file in the set are not able to be transported for use in another. There is no state transfer between files. This means that each time a Gerber or Exelon file for a particular board is converted, it must have exactly the same decisions made for it. If different decisions are made for each file, then alignment issues can happen, such as the pads on the top and bottom layer not stacking exactly on top of one another, or the drill holes not being in the center of the pads, or the border outline being cut off center. But, you say, how hard can it be? After all, board houses routinely do this. Well, yes, they do. But they process the files as a group. For various historical reasons, Line Grinder does not do this. Mostly, it was done to keep things simple. Perhaps such functionality will be added in some future revision. But at the moment, Line Grinder does not do this, and we have to make sure to help it out with some clever setup in the construction of the board design or in the EDS software. So what causes the problem? Let's walk through the base cause. Here we can see the top copper layer of a PCB board we wish to isolation route. Clicking on the Mark PCB lower left option turns on a marker down here that shows the bottom left hand corner of the board. That's good, but where's the bottom right hand corner? Where's the top right hand corner? The Gerber file does not contain this information. We need this from an isolation routing perspective because we have to figure out where the center line is. If all we have is the current Gerber file to go on, we can only say that the center line is halfway between the furthest trace on the left-hand side and the furthest trace on the right-hand side. Remember, we do not have access to the board outline because LineGrinder just looks at one file at a time. So say we estimate the center line. Let's turn on both the flip axis and the center marker so we can see where the software thinks it should be. Here we have the center marker, here we have the flip axis. Basically, line grinder has placed the center line, the flip axis, by setting it halfway between the leftmost trace and the rightmost trace. Now, in this case, the center line is very close to the middle of the square pad in the center of the PCB. Let's look at the bottom layer. Scale it up. Because we are isolation routing the underside of the board, the file manager has flipped the PCB so it can be milled. We can see the lower left marker for the board is now visible in the lower right hand corner, down here. The center position and flip axis are also shown. But we see the flip axis and center position are not alongside the edge of the square pad, like they were on the top copper. They are considerably out of position. Clearly this is an error. The center is the center, and the center position should certainly be consistent for both layers. We clearly have alignment issues. Let's look at the board design in our EDS software, which in this case is KiCad. Here we can see that the top copper layer is in red and the bottom copper layer is in green. The problems arise when the leftmost and rightmost entities on the PCB layers do not overlap. Here we can see that we have a PCB entity on the top layer, a trace that does not have a corresponding object on the bottom layer, or on the drill layer for that matter. If we figure out the center position for the top layer from this leftmost entity and this rightmost entity, and for the bottom layer from this leftmost entity and this rightmost entity, we will come up with different center positions. So, how do we fix it? Well, basically it boils down to either carefully setting the Gerber and drill file origin in the center of the board, or by designing your board to be horizontally and vertically symmetrical. First, Let's take the option of setting the Gerber 0.0, .0 coordinate to be the point at which you want to place the board's center and flip axis. Why isn't this the default go-to move? Well, historically some EDS software could not do this, and most do not do it by default. For the purpose of this demo, I'll demonstrate how to set the origin in KiCad. Your EDS software will probably have a different mechanism. 
We have decided that this hole in the square pad will be the center of the board, the 0.0, .0 point. We can just tell KiCad to do this by going to the Place menu and selecting the Drill Place File Origin option. We drop it on the center. Now we can see that the board origin is dead center. While we're at it, we might as well put the on-screen grid 0.0, .0 origin at the center as well. I just like to do this, but it's not really necessary for Line Grinder. Now the board knows its center point, and we can save the fabrication outputs. We click on File, Fabrication Outputs, and choose the Gerber's option. This brings up the Fabrication Outputs panel. Make sure to check the Use Drill Place File Origin option. We save the Gerbers. Here we can see it's saved. And go and do the same for the drill file by clicking on the Generate Drill Files button. I'll move it onto the screen here. This will open the Generate Drill Files panel. Make sure that the Drill Place File Origin option is checked. And save the Excellen Drill File by clicking on the Generate Drill Files option. Now we have a set of Gerbers and Excellen Drill Files that each have a center in the same location on the board. We have to tell Line Grinder to use it. We return to the Line Grinder software. The adjustments that we need to make are done in the file managers. We cannot adjust the file managers with the Gerber file open, so we clear it. Let's go to the Settings tab. Here is the bottom copper file manager. We change the flip axis found by option from Calculate from Board to Gerber Origin is at Center. Note that you need at least Line Grinder version 3.07 for this feature to be present. We also do this for the Top Copper Manager. I will not show this here, but we do this for each of the other file managers as well. And save the configuration. Once we have the file manager set, we can open the files. We open the bottom copper file and make sure the show G-code origin and show flip access options are on. We can see that the center point and flip axis run nicely through the center trace. We can convert to isolation row to G-code as usual, but I will not show it here. Similarly, if we open the top copper layer, we also have a center line right through the square trace. The drill file will be similarly aligned as well. Note that the file manager has not been set to flip this drill file. This means we are drilling from the top. You can see that the, the flip axis lines up on the hole on the appropriate pad on the top copper layer. So, setting the Gerber origin dead center on the board in your EDS software and setting the file managers to pay attention to that in Line Grinder is one way of being absolutely sure that your board is centered and aligned. Okay, let's assume that you do not want to or cannot set the Gerber origin in your PCB. What other options do you have? Well, in order to get the alignment right, you need to make your board horizontally and vertically symmetrical somehow. There are two ways of doing this. Either place identifiable pads and holes on the board in a symmetrical way and tell Line Grinder how to find them, or design your board to be symmetrical. Let's consider the first option. If your board will have mounting holes, just place them in the board in a symmetrical way. Let's go back to the KiCad PCB layout. I like to make my board symmetrical by placing reference pins in the corners. Reference pins are pads which have a known size and hole diameter. 
I keep a special library of commonly used items like this. In my case, it's called OIS Lib. I can scroll down and see component named reference pin 0100x005. This is a standard pad with a known size of 0.1 inches and a hole size of 0.005 inches. I simply place it in the corner of the board. I can place three others in exactly the same way. I will not show this. The important thing is that the reference pins form a grid. They must be in line horizontally and in line vertically. Note that they're the same distance from the board outline vertically and the same distance from the board outline horizontally. We saved the fabrication and drill outputs as before. I will not show this. And we open up Line Grinder. This time we will set the file managers to take note of the reference pins rather than using a coordinate in the center of the board. As usual, we cannot change the file managers when a Gerber file is open, so we clear it from the screen. We go over to the Settings tab and we select the top copper file manager. The flip axis is now going to be found by calculating it from the board. And then we scroll down to the reference pin section and we enable the reference pin so Line Grinder knows to look for them and we set the reference pin diameter to 0.1 because this is the known size of the four pads I dropped on the board. We make similar changes to the top copper. We uh, make sure we calculate from the board, we enable the reference pins, and we set the correct size. The drill files are slightly different. We set the drill axis found by as calculate from board, we set the drilling reference pins enabled to true, and we set the reference pin diameter to 0 0.005. Okay, so this is the whole diameter on drill file managers. On isolation routing, it's the pad diameter. Okay, so you have to know both in order to set up your file manager properly. We can save the configuration. Now we'll go over to the Gerber and open up the bottom copper file. Have a look at what's going on there. This would have complained if it couldn't find those reference pins. We see them here in the corners. Note that the flip axis and center position are precisely located. It calculated that by doing the math on the reference pins. If we open up the top copper, we will also see that it has found the reference pins. And the flip axis and origin center is nicely found. Well, things seem to be working out very well for the isolation routing file managers. Let's have a look at the drill file and make sure that it got the alignment that it needs. We open up the drill file, and we scroll up and we can see that the drill file is indeed aligned. The file manager for the drill file is not set to flip, so we're drilling from the top, and we see that the flip axis and center point is nicely aligned on this hole. To sum up, a set of symmetrical reference pins can be used to tell Line Grinder how to find the center of the board. Just place four of them on the board in a grid symmetrical to the board outline and set the file managers so that Line Grinder knows to use them to align the boards. If you have a set of mounting holes in all four corners, these can often do double duty and be used as reference pins. Just set the pad size and drill hole diameter in the appropriate file manager. So, at this point you may be saying to yourself, I don't want to have a set of four isolation routed reference pin pads in the corners of my board. Well, there's nothing saying you have to have four of them, there's nothing saying they have to be on the board, and there's nothing saying they have to be isolation routed. I'll explain. Let's have a look at the PCB board in KiCad. Here we see our board with our four reference pins in the corner. Let's move them off the board. As long as they are in line and they are equidistant from the borders of the board, everything will work. The reference pins will be found. But 
that's still four of them. We don't want four. Let's have two. Well, we can just take and we can move that down. As long as we put this dead center bang on, and this one dead center, oh, hang on, dead center bang on here. So we're lined up through the center. We can delete this guy. And we can delete this guy. And we have two reference pins. Oh, that's not correct. Notice there's a difference in distance here. So we have to have them exactly the same. So that's better. Okay, so we could do that. We don't necessarily need to isolation route these pads either. I'll go and save the fabrication outputs as before, and we'll open it up in Line Grinder. The first thing we have to do is set the file managers appropriately. But, since how we just did that in our previous example, we're already set up to use those reference pins. What we really have to do is tell it not to isolation route itself. So as usual, we clear all of the Gerber files off, we go to the settings tab, have a look at the top copper, and we say, facts is found by calculate from board, that's good. We scroll down to the reference pins thing, and we say reference pins are ISO routed, and we make sure it says false. Okay, that's the default, so it usually say false unless you've turned it on for some other reason. The diameter is correct, and we know we're looking for them, so that's good. We check the top copper, it's the same thing. Reference pins are ISO routed equals false. The drill hole, well, that's slightly different. Okay, it doesn't have a don't drill the reference pin, simply because mostly you want to have your reference pins drilled when you're doing the Exelon, but you could always set it down here in the ignore drill, just set your drill diameter properly, and turn this one on and it'll work. I'll not do it here, but you can do it if you wish to. So now that we've got the settings configured, let's open up our bottom copper file. And there it is. We see our two reference pins. We see that it nicely picked up the center line and the clip axis off of the reference pins. And we can basically make that a little bit larger and we can convert to G-code. Notice that our reference pins have disappeared. We set them not to be isolated routed. I'll emphasize this by showing the Gerber plot. You can see there's no little white line around it. The bit will not run around these things. Similarly, the top copper and everything else. So the big takeaway from this segment is you really only need two reference pins to tell line grinder where the center is. They just have to be on a line through the center. You don't have to isolation route them. You don't have to drill them. And they don't even have to be on the board. There is a third option for ensuring that PCBs on your circuit board are aligned. I hesitate to show it to you because I consider it to be deeply distasteful, as it involves placing your components in corners so they have a pad on each corner as if they were reference pins. I'm not going to go into this in a great deal of detail, but I just find it unsatisfactory to have to change your board layout to cope with the vagaries of some Gerber to G code conversion software, even if it is my software. So let's go to the PCB layout board, and I'll just give you a quick run through of how this might be done. Here we are in KeyCAD again. Let's get rid of these little reference pins. Right, so what I would probably do is I'd find everything with a pad, and I'd just move it up into the corner like that. And now I find something else with a pad, and I move it down into the corners here, and we just do the same thing again here. And we do the same thing again here, like that. And we can see the distance here, and here, and here, and here are the same, and here, and here, and here, and here are the same. Of course, we got to clean up the traces and everything else like that, but that's the idea. If we fixed up our traces and ran through the fabrication outputs again, Line Grinder could estimate the center line based off of this, and we wouldn't have to tell it to use reference pins or anything else like that. And because it's equidistant from the board outline, the board outline would be good, and because we use pads instead of traces, like we can't have a trace sitting out here like that, we have to have only pads on the outside. And because we used uh, pads like that as our furthest, you know, rightmost point and furthest bottommost point and that sort of thing, the line grinder would be able to pick it up and estimate and get a clean estimate based off the board contents. That's it. Like I say, 
not really very satisfactory to have to do that, but it's an option. And if you're just doing a quick board and you have a lot of small components like resistors, perhaps, or something like that, you can just put them in the corner and uh, let her go. Well, this video has gone on long enough. It's time to wrap it up. So let's summarize what we've seen. The first part shows you why there can be alignment problems with line grinder. Basically, it's due to the fact that it processes one board at a time, and each board has no idea about the decisions made on the other. The easiest and best option is just to set your center point in the center of the board and tell Lie Grinder to find that and use that. If you can't do that or if you don't want to do that, you can set up reference pins in the corners or along the center line and tell Lie Grinder to use them to figure out the center point of the board. Or, as a last option, you can just, as part of your board design, make sure you put pads in the corners as if they were reference pins, but then you don't got to tell line grinder to use them. I hope this clarifies the situation for you and I wish you well creating your circuit boards with line grinder.